Hey guys, Doc. Uh, today's video, I'm gonna do some updates. I'm gonna answer some questions. I'm gonna show you some basic stuff, tips for gear. Things like people have been asking about my glasses, my boots, my hats, all kinds of stuff. I'm gonna give you a couple tips on that. I'll show you the update on the lawn scalp. I'll show you the update on the green. Uh, I was gonna come back here and put out some more PGF complete, and I didn't have any. <laughs> so I decided to go ahead and put out some more of those chicken feed and humic. Uh, humichar so I didn't get much on video it's just too hot out here today uh, it's 93 degrees in the shade it's just smoking hot I know it's 110 where you live <laughs> but I'm old and fat before I begin uh, don't forget the Bermuda lawn guide walks you through our entire season if I talk about a product there's gonna be a link in the description below that takes everything and puts it on one page Click subscribe, we love you. Hey guys. Oh, Jesse and her fiance, um, they had to do some dog sitting this weekend or something, so I haven't heard from her yet, which means I need to get out here and cut this. Let me give you a couple of quick tips. Number one, this is kind of stupid, but oh, the feet. Take care of your feet. <laughs> I was playing with Linda out here about three years ago in flip flops. I rolled my foot and heard this big pop. I broke a bone in my foot very badly and I was basically on the sofa for three months. It was bad. As a matter of fact, to this day I still feel it. But I've also had experience with um, some severe foot infections. You know, ex-marine, <laughs> always getting into crap. And one of the reasons why you end up getting infections is because your skin cracks. Your skin is protective and when you open it up, you can get a severe infection. And I won't go into the details of what I had to go through for that infection, it was bad. So, uh, I'm gonna put a link to this. I actually buy this at Walmart, and it's a very specific, they make some of this with pumice, and that's not what you want. This is just a foot cream with Epsom salt that's a conditioner, but it's kind of thick. Um, and I just put a coat, a light coat, all over my heel, in all over, in between my toes, everything. Because here's what's gonna happen. Um, you're going to be walking around and your foot, you don't, do not want cracks on your feet. So, my feet, <laughs> they're beautiful. They're smooth as a baby's butt right now. They're not oily, they're just smooth. And then I put on my socks, but I do this every time before I go out because I've learned through that one incident, which was horrible, by the way. Gosh, that was, what, 20 years ago, I think. 20, 25 years ago, um, that was a bad infection in between my toes on cracked skin. So, get this stuff, put it on. The next thing, socks. Get some thick socks, but do not wear wool socks, and I'll tell you why. Um, the boots I'm going to show you, if you wear these boots, you can get a lot of heat abrasion, and you'll get these red marks around your ankles. I even got them with these. I really like to find hiking socks that are like a mix of poly, cotton. Don't get wool socks. As a matter of fact, I think these might even have some wool in them. So, ow. so put these on. And then, you don't want to wear thin socks. Um, hiking boots. Ankle high. You want them above the ankle. Because what you don't want is you don't want, like you can get a stress fracture if you're out here and step in a hole and roll your foot. Trust me, I've been there, done that. So these are lightweight hiking boots. And the way, I don't, these are like, are from Academy, but they're real light, but they're ankle high, they're above the ankle. And you want to tie, you always want to tie this support. Now I also go in and I put um, a pair of soft sole, SOF. I'll put a link to these, soft sole inserts. It's the only impact absorbing insole in the market that really is an open cell foam material. How do I know that? Because the inventor of this product, I actually met over, let's see, my daughter is over 26 years ago. <laughs> um, and um, it's a phenomenal product. I'll put a link to it. You just take out the insoles that are in the boots and you replace it with these because you're going to get a lot of pounding on your foot and man, these will change your world. Again, they're soft sole inserts. I'll put a link to them and it's one specific model. It's the, it's the, it's the athlete or the athletic version. 
uh, it's an open cell. You can drop an egg on it from six feet and it's impact absorbing and that's what you want. So I'll put these on. And again, don't tie them overly tight, but make sure you tie the ankle over up the top of the ankle. Hats, everyone asks about hats, always wear. Uh, the first thing I do is I put on, I'll put a link to this. This is Neutrogena Dry Touch 100 Plus. If you have any kind of sensitive skin whatsoever, this is a really, really good sunscreen. You can use this on your face. Your face won't break out. I use it on my arms. I, this is the first thing I do in the morning because I've started to get some sun sensitivity on my nose. I've got, started to get some sun sensitivity. My hats, always wear a good hat. These, I actually cannot find these on Amazon. I actually got these at Academy. If you go to Academy under hats, look at Magellan. You'll see these hats. They're a heavy canvas. I think they're 19 bucks. Order the large, extra large, because uh, there's a pull strap, and you can also shrink them down. Um, now that I told you where I got these things, they'll probably sell out, but there's three different colors. Large, extra large is what you want to order. Don't get the, don't get the medium or whatever size. So that's kind of my routine in the morning, and then hydrate. What I do is I take water bottles and I put a squirt of the athletic uh, enhancer squirt inside of it. And we have a little fridge in the garage for the girls and all my helpers, and we keep that stocked with cold water, and I make them drink water before they start. Hydrate before you start. It's gonna be hot today, and I think I gotta cut because I don't know if I got any help. Anyways, I'll take you down, and uh, earlier I shot, I wanna show you a strip cut that I, sh I showed you earlier. I'll show you that and then I'll take you over and show you the green. So hold on. <laughs> what is it with me and dogs in my videos? <laughs> uh, I figured I'd just do a quick video and give you guys sort of an update. Uh, this is, oh what, five days after the scalp. And the lawn looks really green, but if you look close at it, those brown patches are always slow to heal, and that's important. Um, that's why you really don't want to do this in a cold weather, like in the fall. Learn my lesson there. But in the summertime, man, you can manipulate this. So you can put down PGF complete, water it, get it going. But you'll see, so... If you stand back and look, the lawn looks great. But when you come in close, see these brown patches? Now these are gonna be slower to heal up and grow back in, but that's okay. So what I'm doing now, but what you need to do, and it's real important if you ever do this summer scalping, which not everyone does, is you gotta keep cutting. <laughs> you gotta keep cutting, otherwise it's gonna get out of control. So the whole point of this is to lower my height of my Bermuda. So you can see, it's pretty prominent there. This is the uncut over here, and then I ran two strips here. So um, I keep cutting at this height because that's my desired height. And I'm gonna wait until these brown patches fill in. And once these brown patches start to fill in, then I'm gonna hit it with some growth regulator. So I may even um, come out here even though I put down P, uh, PGF complete a week and a half ago, I still may come down and do a real light coat again. And that's a beautiful thing about PGF complete. Because it's such a fine particle size, you can come out and you can do it in light, light coats. The green, I gotta say, looks great. I finally have this fine, fine, Lots of millions of these little teeny sprouts of that new seed. So we've got Bermuda, we've got Bent, and we've got Blue. Uh, and both of those are, the Bent and the Blue are creeping dwarf type varieties. So it's starting to really fill in, fill in nice. And I'll give you guys an update on this. So you can see I'm still getting a little bit of that bump from that large Bermuda. And uh, it really won't be a puttable green until some of that bent and blue creeping starts to grow up and starts to fill in. 
So, but we were not expecting to have a puddle of green this year. We just really want something to chip into. But I think it's gonna work. So I'm excited about that. Again, when we built this, we used a uh, rooting mix and a ton of humichar, sprayed it with super juice, um, and then just kept building it and building it. The nice thing for us is this is naturally sort of a crowned area in our yard, so it worked out perfectly. So it drains really well, there's no pooling, and I have five sprinkler heads all around the screen, so it's perfect. So I figured I'd take a minute to answer some questions in the comments from my previous video, which was the dark green lawn, which talked about really focusing on two main products, PGF Complete and Humichor. And what I was doing is really trying to get people that overthink, especially people that are new to doing their own lawn care, to stop looking for that next product. What else is going to, if you will just simply focus on those two products to begin with, that really is the main thing to help improve your lawn. Now, I will say 95% of the people that use PGF Complete put it down, they know how to use it, they put it out every three to four weeks, they're putting it out correctly, they're putting out the human char and they get great results. There's a handful of people, 5%, that say, Doc, I'm not getting the same results that you get. I'm not getting a real lush. And I think if you understand lawn care, you know what I'm about to say. PGF complete is a 412 ratio. If you're not getting a good stimulated response and your lawn is not doing what my lawn does or the other three lawns in this neighborhood, that's basically all they've gotten and they look beautiful, you need to get a soil test. Because I guarantee you, especially if you're in the southeast or have a heavy clay soil, you probably are low on phosphorus. And if that's the case, your lawn is gonna look weak, it's not gonna respond well, you need to go out and get a bag of cheap 101010 from Lowe's or Home Depot, cheap garden 101010, and put it out on your lawn. Put out a good coat. You need to get your phosphorus, but you have to have a soil test done. You can go out, dig up your soil, take three samples, send it off to Clemson, uh, pay six bucks a test, and have it back within a week or so. Our lawns all around here are lower, are, we're low on phosphorus, and that's exactly what we did. We bumped it up. But once you do that one correction, that's it. Because phosphorus will stay in your soil for a long time. <laughs> so that's why people that use high phosphorus fertilizers, they have all kinds of issues. Uh, they have chlorosis. They have to put down more nitrogen. They have to spray with iron. There's all kinds of issues. So soil test is probably one issue. The other issue is might even be pH. If your pH is off, and the way that pH works is pH sort of limits what nutrients are available to the plant. So you need to test your pH. You know, you want to be in that 6, 6.5 sort of range for your pH. So a soil test will really open your eyes. And so if you're not getting the response that you're seeing, like we're seeing all these lawns, soil test time. Soil test time. Now, today I am doing some of the chicken feed, and I'll address that real quick. We don't put down chicken feed really as an organic fertilizer. Yes, when it breaks down, you're going to get a release of some nutrients, but that's not why we put it down. The reason why we put chicken feed down, or you can use crushed soybean even if you can find it, it's hard to find, is that it's organic. And when something that's really clean, like a bean or a grain, actually breaks down on your lawn and gets eaten by the microbes, it goes through a process called humification. And that's what happens when you get that real black soil, that's organic matter that's decomposing down to the point where it's can't be decomposed anymore. It's leaving a lot of carbon. It's leaving a lot of good things in your lawn because nothing dies on my lawn. I don't have animals dying out here. I don't have crops. I don't have wildfires, the things that make soil nice. So that's why we just add some clean organic matter. That's all we're doing with this. Now, the other question that came up is, do I still need to spray super juice with a micro pack when I put this down? And the answer is, is not really. If your lawn is fairly healthy, it's warm, it's humid, trust me there's a ton of microbes inside your soil i don't think you really needed to do anything in the spring when it was still cool yes we were going to go ahead and we're going to boost up the microbe count and that's why we did that uh, another question that came up someone said uh, does fertilizer kill soil microbes and the answer is, is not really the amount of fertilizer we're putting down isn't really going to touch your microbe population if you have a heavy if you have a healthy soil trust me a little bit of fertilizer is not going to do anything to your microbe population. Remember, in one tablespoon of soil, 
there's more microbes than there are people on Earth. We'll say that one more time. In one tablespoon of so healthy soil, there's more microbes than there are people on Earth. So putting down a little bit of fertilizer is not gonna kill all your microbes. That's a myth, <laughs> absolute myth. So uh, anyways, we'll go forward with the day. Long, hot day, did a lot. Tag along and watch what I did. Well, crap. <laughs> I came in here, I thought I had, uh, I thought I had more PGF complete than I do. And I think I'm out. I think that these are all human chalk. Huh. I ran inside and went to Amazon. <laughs> I'm gonna be here tomorrow. God, it's so nice. Otherwise, I'd be running to Lowe's, loading up a truck. Gotta love Amazon. So, anyways, I think I think I have some down in the shed. I hope. What's this? Oh man, that's that's the only bag. That little bag. Well, you know what? Since I've got so much chicken feed and humichar, I think I'm going to put out chicken feed and humichar back here. And then tomorrow when the PGF Complete comes in, I'll put that out too. Again, one of the goals here... Man, it's hot out there. So, one of the goals here is nothing ever dies on your lawn that's organic. There are no brush fires, there are no natural plants just dying on your lawn. And that's how soil becomes the humification process, which is the rotting down to almost a carbon state turns soil black. And that's why we put the, this organic matter on the, on, on the ground. If you had soybean, finely crushed soybean, you could put that down. We use a chicken feed, just something that's clean, non-medicated, low salt. Um, some kind of organic matter just to put on the ground and then I'll put some uh, I'll put some uh, humid char Dude, it's so hot out here. I just want to go inside. Anyways, I'm gonna get the big spreader and put it up So basically it's just grains. That's all we're putting out. This actually feels a little damp. Hmm, interesting. People ask, what, that's kind of what it looks like. That's my application rate. It's just miserable. So a lot of people ask about application rate. So I got two 50 pound bags and put it all out on my back. When you take away the green, swimming pool, garden, I have probably about 9,000 square feet because it's close to 11 or 12. And then you take all this out. Did not put it on the green. Just simply because I don't, I've don't. i got new germination and I don't want to put any of this on new germination. Why, Doc? Because I have no idea. I've never tested it and now is not the time to screw that up. But uh, over here, people ask about birds all the time. I never have birds bother me on it. But just for the hell of it, I did a triple layer over here. There's always squirrels and birds over here. We'll see if I can draw some in just for the heck of it. <clears throat> but usually what I'll do is I'll run my sprinkler system like tonight. And then if I want to be OCD about it, I can get my hose and blow it because it'll be all soft and mushy and blows right down into the thatch. But now I'm going to get my humichar. <sighs> By the way, if you don't know what humichar is, 50-50 mix of humic acid and biochar. So you don't need to put any more humic acid on your lawn. It's in there. 
it's actually made in the USA up in Ohio by a real plant. <laughs> Look at the size of this plant. Um, it's just uh, it's organic certified humicaria, so you can use it on organic crops or organic gardens. It disperses as soon as water touches it, breaks into thousands of subparticles. And basically you use less fertilizer, it improves your soil, it adds carbon for hundreds of years, just does all kinds of good stuff. So, and no nutrients, put out as much as you want. So I'm gonna go grab some. <sighs> so, I've got my opening at maybe just over a quarter of an inch. cut the bottom out because I know I'm going to use it all. I think you can probably see I think you can probably see the human chore and chicken feet here. <laughs> uh, I think it's like 6.30 in the morning. 6.40? Sun's barely coming up. So, this is pretty good looking here. Of course, we still have a lot of these brown marks in the lawn from the scalp. But I wanted to show you you if you enjoy spending time outside you can do this step but I'm gonna cover a couple quick points someone said do you have problems with birds with the chicken feed I don't have any problems with birds there's a ton of these little birds out right now and I'll tell you right now <clears throat> if they wanted the chicken feed they would be down here in the lawn eating it because they're not I'll tell you right now if you have a lot of birds coming into your lawn that is a top sign that you have probably either army worms, sod worms, cut worms, especially early morning, late in the afternoon, go out and test. Do the soapy water test. And I'll be covering that probably in my next video. But this looks amazing. So let me show you a little, I'm gonna go grab my tripod and we'll walk down here. So you can see in the lawn, let me find a good spot here. So you can see in the lawn, see all that? So what I did last night, I turned on, uh, my day runs about 14 hours a day. At some point I got to shut down. I go sit down, <laughs> grab some peanuts, go watch a little Netflix. And I grab my phone and I turn on my sprinkler system and I run my sprinkler system. Gosh, that green looks good. Look at that. That's amazing. I run my sprinkler system just for like five minutes not much at all and all I'm doing is, is I'm getting this chicken feed and humichar wet that's all I'm doing then what I like to do now it'll just fall down into the soil naturally through the thatch but if you want it to act really fast get a hose now I just use I have I have really high pressure because we run off our irrigation system. But I just use just a regular shutoff valve. People ask me all the time, it's just a regular shutoff valve, that's all this is. And then I'll just walk around and blow it down in the ground. And all I'm gonna do... Is just walk by and blow it in. See how it disappears? That's it. And that's all I do. 10,000 square feet, it may take me 20 minutes to walk around. The other thing this does is this gives me a time to really sort of inspect my lawn. This time of day, you may see army worms, you may see some other insects. It's just a good way to actually spend some time with the lawn and get to know it. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Oh, by the way, is that the sexiest thing you've ever seen? <laughs> Shirts. These shirts are great, man. They're 12 bucks. 12 bucks. And the fun part about wearing one of these is you wear it to Walmart. Someone's going to go, What the hell is human chaw? What's human chaw?
So one quick note is majority of people don't have to do this because you have a little bit taller grass and the particles are going to fall down. They're just going to naturally fall down into the thatch layer. They follow the blades. My problem is, is I've got half inch tall grass that's so thick, nothing can get through it. <laughs> and that's why mine want to sit more on top. Um, I can't, you can't not get through this grass, it's so thick. So that's why I do this. Majority of people don't have to worry about it. It just falls down into the thatch layer. Now this is kind of cool. I'm over here on the blocks. So just let me show you the properties of Humichar, why this DG technology is so cool. See that, see this right here? See those micronized particles? Watch, watch what happens. Okay, see this right here? Watch what happens. Isn't that cool? That isn't the coolest thing you've ever seen. Look at that. That is so cool. And that's going... That's probably one of the coolest examples I've seen in a while of how effective humichar is at getting into the soils. It's micronized, it's in a DG particle, you wet it, boom, down into the soil. Let's watch that again, ready? So as an example, here's some of it right here, watch. Look at that. Is that cool or what? Now that's like two particles. That's so cool. All right, so as you can tell, it's a little bit later. A few hours later, I talked to Jess. She's gonna come over. Uh, she's gotta cut the front. I got a bunch of projects for her to do. We're gonna do some stuff in the garden. But I may even have her, I cut this lawn yesterday and I may have her cut it again today. Because what we're doing is, is we're cutting and we're cutting and we're cutting. We're really keeping this short. Um, until we can get this new growth regulator put down, which that video will be out in a few days. Things are looking really good. The green is really looking good. I'm really happy with this green. Like I said, the germination I was worried about, I thought pre-emergent might be pushing it down. It's starting to come in finally. So I'm pretty happy with that. I cut it yesterday. I'm pretty happy with that. Now on the green, eventually what'll happen here is the uh, bent and blue dwarf creeping that we have will actually sort of overtake the thicker Bermuda and fill in all these little gaps that are out here. So it'll be kind of a hybrid mix. It'll be kind of cool to watch this progress over the next couple months. Anyways, guys, we got a fairly long day planned today. So uh, again, I think I'm going to do an army worm video next, and then I'll do the um, and then I'll do this uh, growth regulator stuff. Talk to you later. Dad.